Sorry to keep you waiting, boys. Zack. Emily is already a goddess of the forest. Let's forget work for a bit and drink a little, shall we? York? Why is she here? I just thought the more the merrier. You know, to relax and get loose. Is this a problem? No, of course not. Pardon me, Emily, but I'm pooped. I think I'll just call it a night. George, I just got here and you're walking out on me? I was hoping the three of us could have a drink and let out a little steam. I'm afraid I've already had enough. And I already had a good man-to-man -man with York. So I'll see you guys. I think George likes you, but he's avoiding you all at the same time. <laughs> How astute. There's a reason? Nothing worth going into. It's a thing of the past. <laughs> okay. He did ask me out when I first came to town. I was still in high school. But I never really considered him my type. And there's the age gap thing, too. I respect him, of course. Or I wouldn't have taken this job otherwise. So, did you move to this town alone? Of course not. I came with my parents. Tell me about them, then. Sure, why not? My dad dealt in stocks in New York. He was hardly at home when I was a kid, always working. Those pieces of paper were far more important to him than I was. Which is no different now, really. I, I don't see much of him. My mother? Totally different story. A wonderful person that I still respect. She was always kind and understanding. Not only that, but she would always help me find my way. She could be fierce, too, scolding me if I took a wrong step. We had our battles, sure, but... All in all, she was a wonderful mother. Past tense? Yeah, she's gone now. Cancer, just before I graduated high school. She gave this to me just before she died. I take it with me wherever I go. It's what I treasure most. I'm sure she's very proud of you. I had a good time tonight. Good night. See you tomorrow. York. Yes. Please don't lie to us, okay? I won't. Don't worry. I won't.
Zach, let's go over our progress. From what Olivia told us, and the sketchbook we found at Becky's house, Nick and Diane became our primary suspects. There were a couple of reasons for this. First, Becky gave the missing locket to Diane. Also, Nick has no alibi for when Anna and Becky were killed. We followed Nick to the art gallery, which led us, unfortunately, to our third victim. The third victim, Diane, was strung up in the entrance hall of the art gallery. Her hands were tied and a knife was sticking out of her chest. However, there was a marked difference from the previous crimes. Do you remember what that was, Zach? suggest that very little time had passed since the crime was committed. Which means the criminal was still close by. There was someone near the scene. There are two possible candidates. Nick, who was knocked out in the entrance. Zach, who was the other person in the gallery? We followed Willie, good dog, all the way to him. Kaysen's statement came out as follows. He and Diane were in a physical relationship. That was why he visited the gallery. The two were in the middle of such a meeting when Nick showed up. Diane lost her cool and shut Kaysen up in the basement. Now what did Kaysen hear when he was locked up? sound of boots passing by. Nick was wearing boots that day. Which means it was likely that Diane met with Nick in her room. Nick said he argued verbally with Diane about her playing around with men, but they eventually decided to go out drinking to make up. However, immediately after that, Nick was attacked by someone in the entrance hall and knocked unconscious. We saw the rest. Zach, do you think that Nick is our serial killer? Me too. Asha sent in a report too. He found a large volume of red seeds in Diane's stomach. This confirms her as a victim of the raincoat killer. Remaining leads. There is the locket, which is in Carol's possession. The man with the tattooed back, and the upside down peace sign. There's a lot left to answer. I hope the coffee will give us more guidance tomorrow. Zach, what did you think about George pouring his heart out? I was surprised. It's the end of a monarchy. And he called me York instead of Agent Morgan. Emily? What's going on? Do you know what time it is? Um, I'm sorry. I... I couldn't sleep, so I was drinking alone. My mother was a very kind woman. She always smiled so brightly. Baked cakes and cookies every day. She'd say that I needed the sugar because I spent so much time thinking. My father was always quiet. We never talked much. He was a federal agent, just like me. And he was hardly ever at home. The only words he ever had for me were harsh ones. I had a vivid imagination, and 
I remember he once said this to me. There are plenty of crazy things in this world. You don't have to go dreaming them up. And it's my job to make sense out of them. One day you'll understand what I'm saying. I found out later that my father was one of the first to ever use criminal profiling to catch bad guys. And so now I'm doing exactly the same job that he did. Like father, like son. Can I ask you something? Shoot. Mind if it's something personal? Fire away. Who's Zach? <laughs> uh, um, Zach is a friend of mine. Oh, so you do have friends. Yeah. He's my only friend. What kind of person is he then? Well, I've never seen his face. But he's always with me, and we discuss everything. When did you become friends? A long time ago. Back when I was a child. I was seven. I woke up one morning to hear my mother crying in the living room. This wasn't normal, so I headed in to see her. My father was there pointing a gun at my mother. I was so scared. I closed my eyes, so I, I don't remember much more. But I do remember the words my father said to me. At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. When I came back to my senses, they were both dead. He shot my mother and then killed himself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. Zach's with me. It was around that time that we became friends. I'm here. I'm with you, he said. I'll be here always. We can get through this together. Quite aside from that terrible scene in front of me, that voice seemed to make me calmer. And here we are, working together, getting through things. This is the first time I've ever told anyone about this. I wonder if Zack will get angry. That's a sad story. But I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm sure there was a reason for what your father did. I know. I think maybe I became an agent to find out why he did what he did. Yeah, York, I, I forgot to thank you. Thank me? For what? You saved my life. If you didn't save me at the gallery, I would have died along with Diane. No need to thank me for that. I'm pretty useless. I couldn't save Becky. I couldn't save Diane. What did you just say? Useless? <laughs> I was never expecting to hear you say that. Huh. You might be a modest guy in you after all. Finally, you noticed? You're a little slow, aren't you? Maybe <laughs> hopeless, but not useless. Zach, do you think Emily got home safely? Anyway, I think it's more serious of a situation than I thought. Do you remember? Our conversation with Emily. She's really interested in you. I think she's starting to have certain feelings for you. If that's the case, Zack, you and I are rivals. This is a very serious situation indeed. Well, if 
it comes to that. Let it be a fair fight. Agreed? Previously during the investigation. So, you want to find out everything there is to know about Diane? In New York, Nick is leaving the bar. Wait! She's still alive. Stop right there, Nick. You're under arrest for the attempted murder of Diane Ames. Emily, hurry! You saved my life. No need to thank me for that. I'm pretty useless. I couldn't save Becky. I couldn't save Diane. should not exist. 
even if it means losing someone that you love. Mr. Morgan, do you want a refill? Yes, thank you. Is the coffee that good, Mr. Morgan? Coffee is a vital investigative tool. I know exactly what to do now. I think I'm going to go see Harry today. Oh, really? He's a little strange, but I think he's the most trustworthy one around here. I think you'll have fun with him. If you say so, Polly, then we probably will. Of course! Now, give me your cup and I'll give you some more coffee. I'll see you later, Polly. Mr. Morgan! What about the coffee? Don't you want a refill? Your coffee! York, I can't find Thomas. Was he here? No, I haven't seen him. Have you tried the radio? I've been trying, but he's not answering. What about Nick? No problem with him. He's calmed down a little. He's still saying he didn't do it. Nick said that Thomas disappeared sometime during the night. He kept calling for him, but Thomas stopped responding. I I'm a bit worried. George has asked for permission to search for Thomas. I understand that things have been hard for Thomas, but surely he's just resting at home. Uh, but I'm not against looking for him. Tell George that he has my blessing. Okay. As far as I know, Thomas always calls in when he needs a day off. We're human, and so we are limited. As far as you know, there haven't been any serial killings here before, right? That's right, but that's not... Emily, I'm going to see Harry today. What? Why? We have plenty of other leads to follow, don't we? He did invite me over, though. It would be bad manners not to accept. Are you really an FBI agent? I think the FBI would take a more logical approach to investigations. But Emily, a serial killer does not stay within the boundaries of logic. Thus, you can't hope to capture such a killer using only logic. That's why I'm going to see Harry. 
You go with George and find Thomas. Okay, sounds like a plan. Great, thanks. Ugh, I was an idiot for thinking he might be a good pick. I really need to work on my taste in men. Did you want to go somewhere before we visit Harry? That's fine by me. Hey, Sigourney. I'm glad you're here. My pot, it's getting cold. Please, let's get going. Could you explain what you're talking about? What are you rambling on about? My pot's getting cold as we speak. Hurry, hurry. Zack, I guess we're going to have to drive her home. But I wonder what happens when her pot gets cold. Now, get the car going! My house is over by the lake. Three, two, one, go! Why aren't we there yet? Could you step on it? If we go this slow, my pot is going to get cold!
This is not good. It's losing more and more of its warmth. At this rate, my pot is going to get cold. Hurry! Hurry! Step on it! Why do you have to drag it so easily? Can't you see my pot is getting cold? This is not good. It's losing more and more of its warmth. At this rate, my pot is going to get cold. Mr. Francis York Morgan, Mr. Stewart has been waiting for you. To the meeting room you shall go to. The meeting room is through here. Please be kind. Be sincere. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues.
Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues.
Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues.